Welcome back to my painting channel. Today I have a, a nice autumn scene that I'm going to show you how to paint. Um, I hope you're up for a challenge. Quite complex this scene. Here's the picture that I'm going to use and you can see it covers the lovely yellows, orange, rustic colours in the wood. I'm going to change it slightly. I'm going to take that big tall tree out in the centre there. I'm going to replace it with a, a figure, uh, figures walking down towards the water area. Here's my palette and um, I'll be using the cadmium yellows, the yellow ochres, the light red colour and orange for the rustic trees and I'll need some cobalt blue for the sky and the water. So I'll start off as usual with a, a quick sketch just sketching in the bank there and a horizontal line for the water a line for the hills in the distance and I'll be adding one or two trees on the left and some more on the right I've started off with the um, sky using the cobalt blue wash and I'm mainly painting the centre of the paper I don't want to go out to the right or the left as I want to keep that for the, the rustic colours. What I'm doing now is um, I've got a piece of crunched up paper towel and I'm just dabbing out some of the blue to give me nice uh, white paper so that I can um, paint in the, the nice yellows and orange uh, for the foliage. I've got some blue left over and I just want to um, get the water area filled in so we can then crack on with the rest of the painting. I've mixed up a, a big wash here of a rustic colour and that was mainly yellow ochre with some light red. So I've got a big flat brush and filling in the bottom area here and um, next I'll move up into the trees on the left and the right.
what I'm doing here now is um, using the side of the brush and I've mixed up a thicker wash which is not so wet or loose and as you can see I'm dragging the brush down using the side to create this lovely feathered leafy effect for the trees. So I'm going to carry on. I'm doing the, the right hand side at the minute and I'll just carry on across to the left and um, you just watch. You might want to try this out before you actually do start this with your painting. Well, that's the sketch and blocking in stages complete. So I'm going to have a, a break. I've got some other business to attend to, but um, this is where I would suggest that you take a break as well. And I would recommend that you actually leave this for a day or possibly two, so that when you do come back, you're uh, refreshed. I've, over the years, I've found that um, students painting too long get tired and that's when the mistakes creep in. So, have a break. Come back refreshed. So, hopefully you've had a, a nice break and I'm now back, raring to go, ready to paint in what I like um, as the detail, the exciting part of the painting. So first I had to decide on what figure or figures I was going to use in the foreground. I looked at some that I had used in previous paintings, as you can see here. But um, when it came to the choice, I decided to go for my old favourite, the man and his dog. So I've made a light sketch, you can probably just see that, the pencil mark. And now I'm going to carry on and paint the figure of the man and his dog.
Well, that's the painting complete, and as you can see, it taken around about 35 minutes. Quite pleased with the way the painting's turned out. Um, it's a good example of creating depth with the, the man and the dog walking down towards the water edge. And the tonal, soft tonal values of the hills in the distance has helped create good contrast. So now it's your turn. Plan ahead and follow the video. And remember to take that all important break. So until the next video, take care and stay safe.